Hello neighbors, it's Brad here at eTrailer and today we're taking a look at installing the Peterson Trailer Tail Lights and these are going to be completely submersible and LED. Now they're going to be available in two different configurations. You're going to have your driver's side with that integrated license plate light and also the passenger side. So as you can see, we have a tail light that's out on our driver's side. And so it's a good excuse to not only replace this, but also upgrade in the process. So as we go over to our brake lights, you'll see kind of about the difference of LED versus incandescent. And not only is the light better, but there's also multiple benefits, including a lot longer lifespan, a brighter light, no bulb to go bad, and just overall a more efficient light. And might as well move with the times and upgrade your lighting system. Now these are gonna have 14 LED diodes in there. And the great part about LEDs in general is not only do you get better light, but you also get a longer lifespan. In fact, these are rated for 100,000 hours and there's no bulbs to replace. So trailers tend to bounce around, especially something small like this. And those filaments in the bulb are no different. So they tend to kind of go out quite often and not having taillights on your trailer can be a safety issue. And these are DOT compliant and you're never gonna have to worry about those bulbs going out. Now these are gonna be rectangular and come in right at about eight by three inches. So they have a nice design to them, but definitely still a lot of surface area to see those brake lights, turn signals, as well as running lights. Being completely submersible means that it's gonna be great for your boat trailers, but also you'll have the peace of mind knowing that if your trailer's out in the elements, it's not gonna harm it by having a little bit of rain or snow on it. Installation is very easy. You're just gonna be tying into your existing wiring that you probably had with your taillights and it actually comes with mounting hardware. So uh, let's head over to the installation and get yours installed. Now I've already gone ahead and replaced our passenger side. So let's go ahead and knock out the driver's side. And the first step is going to be removing your old light. So a lot of times they'll just have hardware with some nuts on the back side here. So I'll get these loosened up and our taillight out. And once you get your old tear light off, you can actually go ahead and get those wires separated. And you'll probably notice on the driver's side to get our uh, license plate light here, we have the browns put together. So pretty easy here. Brown is gonna go to the two browns there. Yellow is going to go to the yellow for our turn signal. And then we just have a ground. Now, in order to route your wire, you might have a hole that you can pass them through, but it's pretty cool here. You can see this system that has places to run your wire. So if you wanna run them up and through here, you can actually snap those in place and that way you'll have a nice clean path that's gonna be flush. So that way you don't have to worry if you want your wires coming out here that what you tighten, it's gonna crimp them down. You can just simply route them over. Now what we'll need to do is grab our hardware and you're gonna have these carriage bolts here and these are just gonna slide up and then once you push a little bit extra, they're gonna kinda of pop in place and you can see it holds it there, which is nice. And it does allow for just enough room to kinda of be able to adjust it if you need to on your trailer. So with those in place, uh, pretty much determined that I'm gonna run my wires kind of uh, over to this side. So what I'll do is just simply take our wires and run these up and then you can kinda of just lightly push them into the channels here and that's going to hold that in place. So once you have your wires routed nice and clean to the side that you want, we'll simply just line up our carriage bolts here. Now we're going to be using our existing holes, but if your trailer doesn't have those same holes that line up, then you're going to want to drill those out just large enough to get your carriage bolt studs passed through. And then we'll be following it up with a flat washer and then we have a serrated flange nut here. So nice part about that carriage bolt is it's gonna stay in place in that plastic. So you can actually hand tighten this on here. And get our other one in place as well. So using an 11 millimeter socket, I'm gonna go ahead and just make sure that this is aligned properly. Like I mentioned before, you do have a little bit of wiggle room to be able to kind of move this around as necessary, but uh, get it nice and level. And once you're happy with that, you can go ahead and tighten these down. Now, obviously you don't wanna to get too crazy here because it is mounting in plastic. So I'm gonna just tighten this by hand and then just kind of give it one quarter turn just to make sure that it's nice and snug. At this point, you want to determine the proper amount of wiring that you uh, need to cut off. And ours is pretty close already. So I just pulled back some of the existing wire loom. And uh, where I cut, I'm going to go ahead and just strip these back.
I'm gonna do the same for our yellow as well. Now the light comes pre-stripped, so that's pretty nice. Just a little added benefit there. And as I mentioned before, our two browns are gonna go together. So we'll get these twisted. And then as far as connecting, um, I'm gonna be using a heat shrink butt connector. And these are really good for wiring that kind of lives uh, out in the elements. And basically once you crimp this down and heat it up, it's gonna create a nice seal around it, keeping it watertight. And the reason we're putting our two browns together is because these actually jumper between the driver and passenger side. And that way when we have our tail markers on, they're gonna be working in unison. So you may have a junction somewhere else in your trailer, but you're gonna to wanna to make sure that those are jumped together. We're gonna go ahead and also use a heat shrink butt connector for our yellow wires. And once the heat shrink butt connectors are on there, we'll go ahead and take our heat gun to it. If you don't have a heat gun, you can use a lighter to kind of cinch this up. And as we put heat to it, it's gonna shrink down around the edges, again, creating that watertight seal and gonna protect the connection of the wires. So now we're gonna mount up our ground wire and just using a self-tapping screw, it's not included in the kit, but uh, this is gonna be a nice easy way to mount this up against some frame uh, that's raw metal. So you can see here, I've kind of sanded this down to get a nice clean contact spot. And then uh, it's gonna be have these little teeth that are gonna bite into it. So you want that facing the metal and we'll just take our self-tapper and run it in. Just make sure you don't have any wiring behind where you're drilling. And when tightening that down, just make sure the ring terminal is not free spinning around and it should be good. I've gone ahead and just taken our wire and cleaned it up with some new wire loom and some zip ties and both of which you can get here at e-trailer to kind of just give those wires a little added protection. So now all that's left to do is test to make sure it's working. So first we'll start with our running lights and then we can try our turn signal out as well as our brake lights. And that was a look at Peterson LED trailer taillights.